Hey guys, so I haven't put out a video on this channel in about two months or so, and I'm gonna tell you why right after this. Alright, so it's been about two months since I've put a video on this channel. I have been putting videos on YouTube, but not this channel, so we'll get to that in a minute. So I have some videos planned. I do have a Brooks Hyperon Tempo uh, review that I want to get up. I also got the new Ghosts 14s that I am loving so far, so I want to give a little bit of a preview of that, but I wanted to do this video, it's it's unscripted. I probably should have made this video maybe a few weeks ago, but I kept trying to write a script for it. I just couldn't decide on it. And it, it was very hard to focus on it, and so I just decided to just go and then edit it later. My summer, uh, it was going along awesome. My last video, if you remember, was uh, in Crown City 5K, basically the first major race to happen in California. Went there with my friend David Barco, and we had a awesome time that weekend. Um, a few days later, however, um, as I was editing that last video, my son had a major seizure, and we were basically all at home. He was working on his, he was doing some AP prep stuff. I was working on the last video, and Deanna was working as well. And, you know, we sort of hear him make a noise and then a thud, and then, you know, pandemonium ensues and we are on the phone. I'm on the phone with 911 and we don't know what to, to make of it. Complete heads or tails of, of the, the situation. Um, and over the next few weeks, obviously a very emotional time because we, we just wanted answers. And unfortunately, despite running every, basically every kind of test you could run, we didn't get answers. And we found out that there are literally hundreds of thousands of people who have unexplained seizures from time to time. And so it, it looks like for the time being, my son's gonna be just taking Capra. So that was a very emotional time. When we're going through that, I find out that I grew up, a little bit of background about me, I grew up in Baptist church, um, independent Baptist to be specific. And um, I had a youth pastor named John and Becky Earnhardt and they came to the church right about the time where I moved up into the youth group. At first, uh, you know, I was kind of a rambunctious uh, kind of guy, but eventually we really grew close together and I spent a lot of time with these people. So much so that I feel like they are extended family. I would spend the night over there, we would you know, hang out, we would do projects together, talk about everything you know if i messed up it was you know he was the one to come over there and be like what are you thinking and so i got a text from him i, I forget the exact time basically just saying hey I, I need to have a chat with you about some, something and so it sounded a little odd so i was like oh okay of course like when do you want to talk so we we chat and basically he explained to me that his wife becky earnhardt had went through years of traumatic abuse at the hands of a pastor and missionary named Austin Gardner. And the story is extremely dark. It was, so, you know, he, he kind of goes over the story and we find out that, you know, this is just really bad situation. And she's basically held on to this information for 40 years, but, you know, she was so traumatically abused that a lot of it she had sort of just pushed down. And the thing about emotions, and being a survivor, you have to really deal and process your emotions. You can't push anything down. Eventually, it will come up. Needless to say, he this story needed to come out. It had come to the realization, and I can't, I can't tell other people's stories. You know, it came to Becky's knowledge that she was not the only survivor of this person. A few people that she has known, she knows, or or has very close relationships with, um, also suffered at the hands of. Austin Gardner or his family. So, you know, it, it, she did try to come forward with accusations in 2004. At the time, they were they were missionaries in Peru. This, they were mishandled by what is called Mission Board, which Mission Board is basically a supporting agency that helps people. If you are, you know, in a, in a foreign country, they handle your mail and your finance, you know, finances and any trouble that you might get into. So, mismanaged with that and basically brushed under the brushed under the rug and 
nothing to see here. So when she found out about that she's not the only survivor of this person, this Austin Gardner, it had really, it was really starting to eat away at her. And she was not sleeping, kind of going to other places. Many of you may know or not know, I am also a survivor, not one of sexual abuse, but one of physical abuse. You might have seen my story on Gatorade Endurance, or I, I released my own. I actually plan on doing a larger video of it, hopefully um, in the next year or so. It hit close to home for me because being a survivor, you usually don't get to help other survivors. I mean, the best thing that most people can do for any survivor, whether it's sexual abuse, or physical abuse, or emotional abuse, um, is to just listen to their story and to believe them. Um, this was one of those rare opportunities where I'm I actually being trusted to help uh, this survivor, Becky, tell her story. It means the world to me to be able to do that. It was extremely emotionally tasking to edit this video. The video that I will put in the description uh, is 26 minutes long. And then there were some additional videos that they did and we've had others. So needless to say, um, we're still in this search for you know justice and, and you know trying to make a bad situation into a good situation and trying to help other people. Ultimately, I think our goal, you know, as a survivor, as survivors is to obviously help other survivors who have suffered alone and also to stop future survivors. So we're putting, I was putting together this helping put together our camp, the campaign that we have been running for the last two months or so, well, about five weeks, um, but I was working on it well before that. That was the mindset. The mindset was, how do we help people who have been suffering alone for years? And how do we make sure this doesn't happen again? And that's kind of been our mindset. And I, would, I did want to talk a little bit about, you know, what not to do in these kind of situations. There are a lot of reasons why a person who is abused in a religious environment might wait a long period of time to tell their story. Part of that is there's different responses. You have responses where you have somebody who's abused by maybe a youth pastor or some somebody in church, and their response is they, they just hate the church now, or they, they you know, hate that type of church. You know, they hate those feelings are legitimate. I understand why somebody would be mad at a church, especially if that church tried to brush the, the situation under the table. But then there are other people who wait a long time because yeah, they were uh, abused or assaulted or whatever by a person, but they still love their church. They still believe in God. They're not mad at God. They're not mad at their church. You know, there's this balancing act emotionally that goes where it's like, yes, I want this person to be held accountable for what they did, but I also don't want to hurt my church or hurt God or hurt this other stuff. We've had comments like that, that like, oh, you're hurting the, you know, God, or you're hurting the, the gospel, or you're hurting, you know, the various stuff that, that people say. And I'll be honest with you, those things are illegitimate. How are you gonna have a church or anything and it not be safe for the most vulnerable in the flock, if you will? There are many things that people, victims, survivors have to process. So I, I really think the best response that a person can do is just listen, be supportive, um, don't try to help unless they ask you for help. You know, a lot of people think, well, you know, why didn't you do X, Y, and Z? Um, so the, the, the individual, Austin Gardner, he put together a very creepy video. It's him basically trying to say that they were a family. Now, let me let me just give you context. Becky Earnhardt was not treated like, like a daughter, like they claim. But Becky Earnhardt was basically human trafficked. I believe she actually meets the definition of that from the gardeners. And, you know, she was basically a living slave. She was treated like help. And then also all the abuse that's that's accounted in her story. And by the way, she's very gracious in that video. It was worse. I don't I don't I don't want to ride the line there and tell you story tell her things that that aren't my story to tell. That is one thing that's important about a survivor is don't tell their story. Let them tell their story. But listen to their story and support. Give them you know the ear. The, don't be the guy who starts to try to, to to get logical. Like what they did in this video that Austin Gardner did is they had him try to sell that like oh we love Julia daughter. Then they bring in some lady from Peru, which is where the Earnhardts were for, I, I believe, like 13 years. I forget exactly when they came back, but um, they had to come back because of health issues with one of the kids. But, you know, and, and you have this lady who has nothing to do with the situation saying how good of a guy. It's extremely creepy. I just 
fast forward right past it, and then enters his wife, who's reading letters from Becky Earnhardt from when she was in college. From a logical point of view, you would think, why would a person who's abused for six years write such nice letters to the person and people who did this to them? From a logical standpoint, that doesn't make any sense, but here's what you gotta realize. When you've been abused systematically for six years, you're not thinking logically. You've been basically conditioned to think, and when you watch, if you watch Becky's video, and it's very, it's a long video to watch, um, one thing you'll see is she says, I wanted to please him. I wanted to, you know, be a good, a good person. I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to please him. I wanted to please God. I wanted to, you know, she wanted, the, the underlying message there is she wanted to do that because if she didn't, she got physically assaulted and worse. You, you, you can't look at and say like, well, you know, if, if once she was free, why did she write letters? I mean, it took years. It took years for her to be able to tell her story. And so, you know, I think it's very important for us to allow survivors tell their story in the safest possible way that we can. You know, if you are watching this and you were abused by Austin Gardner, please know that that's where we're at. That's our heart. That's what we want to do. We want to help survivors regardless. Um, we think that regardless of the organization, whether it's a religious organization, whether it's a gym, whether it's an organization like the Boys and Girls Club, or just families, we need to protect our most vulnerable out there and we need to listen and support survivors that's about it i, I could keep going i'm going to edit this down but if you have any comments if you want to watch becky earn our video and see what we've done we're very proud of you know i'm very proud and pleasantly surprised by how successful this campaign this channel and everything that we've done has been so far made more of an impact than i really ever expected to so thank you youtube people and you know all the good people out there that, that helped us make this happen um all right so that about does it uh we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming on our next video i just wanted to get this and clear the air as a survivor i felt i, I kind of needed to say something i wanted to say something that how proud i am um so i got a few weeks i'm running in chicago i did have a few setbacks health-wise um in the last three weeks or so that kind of just really hurt my running program really just trying to get to the finish line and get kind of get that comeback race done in Chicago so that's gonna be exciting that's in a few weeks and then I got a month after that we're going to New York City with Team Ultra go Team Ultra hey guys if you have any comments love to hear it let me know what you think about uh, if you watched the Becky video let me know what you think in the comments or just you can actually just comment on hers that would be fine too and run positive guys thanks